philosophical question for you. If you were suddenly given the power to create a perfect world as you saw it by forcing everyone around you to conform to your ideals, would you do it? I ask this because the Unity Crystals from G5 seem to do just that. These devices are linked to all magic in Equestria and force every pony to get along or else the world will quite literally come to an end. And as a method of bringing every pony together, these seem to work in the show. Every pony gets along, magic returning has caused the three pony kinds to unite, and all is well in the world. Right? WRONG! VERY? Very wrong! These crystals are more than just not good, but they are downright evil! Not only that, but they hinder the show's ability to create interesting stories going forward. But, there is a potential upside to all of this, and if the writers have in mind what I am about to share with you, it has the potential to make for a fantastic story, creating an interesting villain, build on Sunny's character to an insane degree, and give everyone's favorite cotton candy pony, Misty, an incredible arc. Oh boy, we got a lot to go over. So to understand how these crystals would play into what I think would be a fantastic story, we need to first understand why they are so terrible in the first place. Because believe it or not, this story requires taking the trashy stuff and turning it into something beautiful. Now, we know from the comics that the crystals were indeed created by Twilight Sparkle in order to stop Equestria from fighting amongst itself. No more arguing allowed, to the point where even the tiniest bit of conflict, such as Zip saying a few small things to irritate her friends, causes magic to disappear. Now again, this might seem like a good thing, but I want to give an example of what this would look like in an episode of Friendship is Magic. Rarity and Applejack are having a slumber party at Twilight's house. They then become furious with each other and start fighting. Twilight takes a quick look outside and sees magic is disappearing and voids are opening up everywhere. She then runs over to them and shouts, Girls, you need to stop fighting. Magic is disappearing. Quick, say something nice about each other. Rarity and Applejack, not wanting to end the world, force out a compliment to each other. Magic is then stabilized. Conflict is resolved. Episode over. But the problem with this is that the conflict isn't resolved. The characters are still angry with each other. They didn't work out their differences. They didn't bond. There was no genuine apology. They are forced to get along rather than choose to get along. Sure, the crystals have now unified them, but at what cost? This doesn't cause characters to grow. They still hold hatred and anger for one another, and the resolution to this story is incredibly boring. Stories are driven by conflict. It's what makes things interesting. It's what gives a character motive. A character being mean to our protagonist can make us empathize with them more. There are two kinds of unity. One is where we can put our differences aside and come together around our commonalities while respecting each other's differences. And the other kind of unity is where you have an authoritarian figure saying, shut up and do as I say. And these crystals fit the latter. Even the episode that was specifically about how Rarity and Rainbow Dash had nothing in common showed that there were still moral values and goals that they could share and unify around. For example, they are always willing to help one another when a friend is in need without asking for anything in return. No questions asked. Take for example the episode The End in Friend. Imagine if Rainbow Dash and Rarity were so furious with each other that they never spoke again because they were so furious and unwilling to work out their differences that just talk Talking with one another could cause magic to become unstable. Ironically, these unity crystals are incredibly divisive. But there is still one major problem that we haven't discussed. These crystals were created by none other than Twilight. Meaning that Twilight was the one pushing that authoritarian form of unity I was talking about. What makes this worse is that this was the same thing that Starlight did with her village. Starlight thought that it was more important that every pony be equal in misery than unequal in prosperity. So she took everything away that made the individuals unique, and any level of magic or flight that they had was reduced to a point where they might as well have not had it. In a similar way, Twilight sees that ponies are fighting about how some have magic and others don't, and her soul solution to the conflict is to remove all magic from Equestria. I don't even know where to begin with how stupid of a move this is. Who was she doing this for? Was she doing it to put the stuck up unicorns in their place? What about the ponies who didn't think of themselves as better than every pony else? Why are they punished? What about the unicorn that knew few specific, 
very unique spells for their special talent and or occupation. Are they suddenly out of the job because Twilight wanted to punish them for something they didn't do? What about the Pegasi who lived in Cloudsdale and worked at the Weather Factory? They not only just lost their careers, but their homes as well. And speaking of the Weather Factory, did Twilight have any consideration for how draining magic would affect the world? Because the world literally needs magic to function. She just destroyed Cloudsdale, which was a key part in the creation of weather and delivering water to ponies across Equestria, and the sun and moon need magic to move, meaning without it, we are stuck on either day or night. This would cause Equestria to suffer droughts, homelessness, famine, and countless other problems. However, it seems as though the world is functioning just fine without magic in G5. But now there's different problems in terms of continuity if they choose to ignore all this. But that's a whole other discussion that I've already talked about in length in previous videos that I am not gonna get into here. So now that we've got this lousy setup, what do we do with it? Well, call me crazy, but I think that there is a legitimately good way to take all of these problems and turn them into something amazing. And it starts with this. Imagine if Opaline thought that she was the good guy in all of this, and her goal was to steal the crystals in order to ensure that they are kept safe for all eternity. She wants a unified Equestria, a world where no pony ever fights and all three pony kinds can be friends. And to her, keeping the crystals safe is the best way to do that because if they detect a vision, they will automatically silence it. She sends Misty to Maritime Bay to steal the crystals. She can't go herself, seeing as how she would draw too much attention, what with being a giant alicorn and all. Misty successfully steals the crystals from the Bright House, which causes the rainbow they have been emitting to suddenly vanish. Alarmed, Sunny rushes to check on the crystals, where she spots Misty fleeing the scene. Sunny runs after her, attempting to get the crystals back, and follows her far outside of Maritime Bay. Meanwhile, every pony in Maritime Bay is going crazy, panicking and wondering what happened to the crystals. One pony begins accusing Posey of stealing them, given her history on how she felt about magic. Posey defends herself and becomes furious at the accusation. As they argue, magic starts to glitch and cause a magic storm to brew, but Posey doesn't seem to care. She has too much pride to let this pony get away with attacking her character, especially after she's embraced magic. The storm starts causing destruction all around them, but neither pony is backing down. The main five jump in to break up the fight, and through talking with these two, manage to calm things down. Apologies are said, and they manage to work it out between themselves in a conversation. They look around and see the destruction they've brought from their fight, and are more than willing to help repair the damage they've caused. The main five begin discussing what had just happened, how even though everything around them was falling apart, there was still fighting, and how the resolution to the conflict was as simple as a conversation. While they are talking, some pony tells them that they saw Sunny running after a blue unicorn right after the rainbow disappeared, and tells them where they were heading. The main five begin hurrying after her. We then cut back to Misty, who is casting spells left and right in an attempt to slow Sunny down. Sunny counters with her own magic, but for a brief moment, Misty manages to slow Sunny down and distract her for just long enough to hide behind a boulder. While Sunny searches for her, Misty calls Opaline, saying that she can't get rid of Sunny and needs her to come pick up the crystals. Opaline quickly makes her way to Misty and gets the crystals, grabbing the attention of Sunny who rushes over to them, amazed to see a real alicorn. Sunny tells them to give up the crystals and that the world is better off with magic. Opaline tells her, you misunderstand. We do not intend to destroy magic, but rather preserve it forever in the name of friendship. Sunny is confused, but intrigued. Opaline goes on. You are familiar with Princess Twilight, yes? She created these crystals in order to drain magic from the world, seeing as how it was causing so much division. The crystals were eventually meant to come back together, but only once there was true unity between the ponies. While her heart was in the right place, her methods were a bit hasty and bared many unintended consequences. The fighting had stopped, yes. But at what cost? You may not know this, but the world of ancient Equestria needed magic to run properly. So I, a student of Twilight's magic school, took it upon myself to steal the crystals from Twilight and reunite them, knowing it would be better off for the world. However, I knew that so long as magic existed, it always had the potential to spark division. So I took what I had learned from Twilight's school of magic and created a spell to alter the properties of the crystals. If any pony were to fight, these crystals would bring about a magic storm, pushing and encouraging us all to get along. But this was not just any spell I had cast. This was a feat of magic so great it turned me into an alicorn. Unfortunately, Discord had sensed the magical imbalance that I had caused and alerted Twilight to my location. Even with my newfound alicorn magic, I was no match for Twilight and the Lord of Chaos. They took the crystals from me, separated them, 
this time for good, in order to avoid both the division magic would cause and the storms my spell would bring. I was banished, but I knew that one day, magic would inevitably return, either by bringing the crystals back together or over time through their eventual destruction. Nothing lasts forever after all. Sunny stands there in shock. Opaline really was just trying to create an ideal world like the one that she and her father had always dreamt of. Opaline tells her that if they are going to keep both magic and the storms, they need to seal the crystals away in her castle and protect them with a magic spell strong enough to keep even alicorns out. But to do that would require the power of two alicorns. She was originally going to train Misty and Magic to become an alicorn, but Sunny already has the power they need. Sunny just has to come with her to the castle to seal the crystals. Sunny agrees when all of a sudden, seemingly out of nowhere, the main five tackle Misty to the ground. They ask who these two are. Sunny replies and tells them that they need to seal away the crystals so that both Magic and the Storms remain in order to keep Equestria united. Still restraining Misty, they explain to Sunny that the crystals need to be destroyed and that Magic can stay, but the Storms will only make things worse for every pony. They saw with Posey that there's another way, a better way that doesn't cause mass destruction and allows every pony to be open with their feelings rather than being forced to bottle them up, never truly resolving conflict. Sunny doesn't listen and teleports to the castle with Opaline, leaving Misty behind, abandoned by the one pony she thought was her friend. The main five need to learn where they went, so they talk with Misty, explaining what they saw with the magic storm earlier in order to convince her that Opaline's vision of Equestria is wrong. After Misty is convinced, she leads them to the castle where they find Sunny and Opaline preparing for the spell. This is where they need to convince Sunny to destroy the crystals. It's now or never. Opaline tells Sunny to ignore them and to cast the spell. As they are using their magic, Misty attempts to persuade Opaline to stop. She is furious that Misty would betray her like this, which causes another magic storm to appear, this time causing voids to open up in the walls and windows start shattering. The castle begins to crumble around them. This causes Sunny to see the true horror that these crystals are, how they damage the world. And in that moment, she uses her magic not to cast a protection spell on the crystals, but instead to destroy them, shattering them to dust, causing the storms to settle and all magic in the world to return to normal. Opaline is in shock from what just happened. Everything she spent countless moons preparing for, everything she spent her life working towards, her ideal world would never be achieved. Misty tries to comfort her, but Opaline now sees her as the enemy and shoots a laser at her. But all of the main five dive in to shield her from the attack, causing a magic force field to form around them. Hitch asks what's going on, and Sunny replies, It's the magic of friendship. Opaline has seen this magic before, the one form of magic Twilight had failed to teach her. Opaline continues attempting to shoot them, but to no avail. Knowing she's clearly outmatched, she swears revenge on both Misty and Sunny for what they have done and teleports away. The main five return to Maritime Bay, giving Misty a place to call home. She would then join them as one of the main cast, now becoming the new Main Six. Now keep in mind, this is all a very, very rough first draft, and I'm not 100% satisfied with it. I think the ending especially could be changed to something a little less predictable and cliche, but I think this is a good start, but maybe I'm biased. I mean, I did come up with it after all. It takes the authoritarian message of unity the show has been pushing and turns it into a lesson on how we have to do more than just tell people to get along with each other. We have to learn to get along, and that takes work. It's not as easy as saying, be friends. It doesn't solve every problem I have with G5, and it doesn't even fully stop Twilight from being a complete idiot, but at least it's a start, and I think there's a lot of potential for stories with this setup going forward. But this video is getting way too long, and I want to get it out before Chapter 2 releases. If there's high enough demand for it, I might make a follow-up video exploring this idea further. But what do you think of my version of Make Your Mark? Let me know if you enjoyed it by booping the like button, or just leave me an angry comment if you didn't. This is Starstrike, signing out, and I will see you all when Chapter 2 releases.